Hi, this is uh, Ty Pan for Shenzai.com and today uh, we're looking at actually a ton of tablets. What we've got here is 15 different tablets, all in different form factors, sizes and shapes we look at to discuss the uh, topic of form factor as possibly it's one of the most important things you're going to be deciding when you're buying a tablet and when uh, tablet makers are deciding about what they're going to do when they build their tablets. Now. What I've got in my hand here, of course, to start things off is the iPad. This is basically the device that started off the whole trend for the consumer perspective that's made the, the tablet uh, industry the big hit that it is today. It's a 9.7 inch screen, basically almost a 10 inch size device, and uh, it's the one that everybody can buy and get in their hands today. Now, it's not too heavy, it's got a nice balanced weight to it, but uh, some people might argue in terms of the areas like portability and whatnot, like my, that it's not actually that portable of a device, it's more of a sofa surfing device, something you can drag around within the home environment with you when you're on your sofa watching TV or whatever, you can do a little computing as well. That was Mark Zuckerberg's famous com uh, comment not that long ago by the end. A Facebook app for the iPad was because he didn't really consider it that portable of a product, and I think there's a lot of people that agree. Now beyond the iPad here, if you want to take a look at some of these other form factors, they break down into basically about three categories. There's a five inch uh, category where there's devices around the five inch screen size. Seven inch, which seems to be from, in terms of the Shanzai players and a lot of the OEMs now that are coming out with the dominant size for people to uh, be designing their screens around. The seven inch tablets have the advantage of also having been one of the cheaper costs for screens as we understand in the industry. So that might be why a lot of people are choosing those. And then we've also got some I guess you could call them uh, 10 inch size devices of various shapes and, and form factors as well, so those are some of the bigger tablets. Now taking a look at the tablets, we've also got one that we just reviewed yesterday in the Hero Tab which is an 8 inch tablet and actually we kind of are thinking after playing around with this device, not only is it a great device unto itself, but the actual form factor itself is almost the Goldilocks you could say of tablets. It's not too big like some of the bigger devices. Here's how it looks in comparison of size with the iPad. So you can see it's basically the same shape and 4 by 3 aspect ratio that the iPad is, but it's quite a bit smaller. And yet if we compare it to say one of the 7 inch screen size devices, it's quite a bit bigger and wider than they are. So in that sense, that's partly why we consider it a Goldilocks size device. Bringing it down to some of the smaller little uh, devices like the Smart Q here, you can see it's obviously a lot bigger than that. The smart Q is getting down into an area where it's almost the same size as your mobile phone screen. One of the other important aspects of size and form factor is what turns out to be aspect ratio of your actual device. There are very few tablets on the market of any uh, size that are actually the 4 by 3 aspect ratio that's sort of indicative of the original iPad. Uh, the little device we were talking about earlier that we thought was a bit of a, the Goldilocks device as we're calling it, is the 4.3 uh, ratio. But almost everything else you can see is sort of more designed for the widescreen format. Originally when TV was started it was set of those 4.3 inch, uh, a 4 by 3 aspect ratio just because they weren't able to create tubes that were wider than that. They would only create square tubes, thus the TV was born, thus that type of form factor sort of came into play. But after the advent of LCD and other types of display screens, the things moved to a 16.9 aspect ratio, which is more similar to what we have with cinema, which suits better with people with our two eyes and are able to view wider angles. Uh, the tablets, when they came along now here, you'll see also uh, the 7 inch ones are all basically 16.9, 16 by 9 aspect ratio devices. Probably more because most of these devices are actually borrowing screens that were out of stock. Uh, uh, picture frame and digital display devices that have now been converted and used for our new tablet industry. But Steve Jobs of course did go for the 4 by, th by 3 aspect ratio, probably thinking that he wanted to have devices that could show newspaper like uh, content maybe over top of video type content or in internet and web browsing content. So that was probably where the priority was when the original design for the iPad was rather than our typical thinking about uh, watching videos on our devices. Well, when you're also considering and choosing your form factor of device that you're going to buy, you need to think about how important uh, portability, mobility, and pocketability are to you. Those three terms actually encapsulate all of the different uh, tablet sizes that we've got here. If you're looking at some of the larger devices, the 10 inch screen, they're a little bit heavier and they're obviously a lot larger and wider in size. 
Those would definitely be portable devices, easy to carry around your home from the sofa to the kitchen, prop up on display to show off your uh, <laughs> to show off your recipes or whatever content that you're uh, looking at on your on the lab with your devices. Almost dropped them, that's how big that portable device is. In the mid-size range, you've got something that's a little bit more mobile, I would say, is your 70 inch size devices. Not quite fitting in a pocket, maybe the back pocket of some big jeans if you're a bit of a rapper type guy with the heavy big jeans on. And uh, these devices are a little bit more mobile, lighter, you can carry them around. You definitely carry this around with you a lot more than you would with your actual uh, uh, the larger size uh, tablets and then we've got our tiny little five inch and lower size devices these ones truly are pocketable you can throw that in your back pocket or in your jacket pocket or in your front pocket and be carrying that with you without any using any sort of a hands-free portability you're able to walk around with that all the time the same way you do with your mobile phone so I guess you're really gonna have to make a decision in your mind about how important it is to have that device with you at all times and whether or not you want to be carrying it in your hand and whether you want to be lugging it around to be fair though, part of that decision for the higher end and the larger size devices also should take into consideration whether or not you're going to be able to carry a notebook. If you're going to carry a device that large and that size, some of you would be thinking, why not just carry a notebook? Your choice in form factor is also going to have an effect on your choice of architecture for the device, or maybe I should say the opposite. Those of you who are looking for an x86 based device running something like Windows 7 or some other variant of Linux, maybe Mego in the near future or what have you, are going to be uh, probably for the time being constrained to some of the larger devices. We've yet to see uh, a 7 inch or smaller uh, Win 7 tablet in our hands yet. Anyway, you know, those tablets that we see based on x86 architectures with Atom processors typically inside are in the larger size. With the larger size device comes more weight as well. You can find that the architecture for the x86 includes uh, bigger batteries to support the power draw from the Atom processor, and you'll find that the and cooling systems and just the chassis design, most of that with all of its attendant pieces is making for heavier tablets and a bigger size. So if you're looking for an x86 tablet, you're probably going to be looking at a bigger tablet as well. This also has a little bit of an influence on price. X86 platform with its attendant DDR2 RAM possibilities and uh, various screen sizes being a little bit larger, battery again being a bit bigger and more expensive. Typically you're seeing higher prices on the x86 based devices. So if you're going for a larger device and you want to go x86, you're looking to probably pay a little bit more as well. When you're looking at the smaller tablets, also something you need to consider is you're basically putting yourself in an ARM camp and an Android camp. You'll see that most of the devices that are running in the 7, 5, and smaller range form factor are running uh, Android variants. They replaced the uh, Windows CE of yesteryear with Android uh, 2.1 being quite popular now. And actually, we're seeing already a very fast transition to Android 2.2. So there's already three or four tablets out there on the market uh, from Shanzai players that are coming in the Android 2.2 version. Now that uh, brings a lot of improvements and enhancements and higher uh, resolutions that are coming around the corner with Android 2.3, but it's not until actually Android 3.0 where Google has said that they're going to put an actual operating system that is dedicated for the tablet uh, form factor. So in the meantime, I think uh, that's why we'll be seeing these devices in these sizes and shapes until Google comes out with a little bit more of a lead role in defining the spec for what an Android 3.0 tablet should uh, look like in what kind of resolutions and form factors that will best support. So for now, uh, as I said, if you're looking at a, uh, an ARM processor, you're probably looking at an Android variant and either a 7 inch or a smaller size uh, tablet. So to wrap things up a little bit for you, I guess uh, we're first I'd like to say is we're really lucky here because we get to play with all kinds of different tablets and, and uh, fool around with them. But at the same time, it's really starting to harden my opinions about what I think is a good form factor and what I don't think is a, not a good form factor and, uh, and give me my very specific set of preferences. So for me, actually, after using the iPad for as long as I have and some of the other larger tablets, I have to say I've disregarded that form factor completely. For me, the iPad is too large. The other uh, Windows tablet devices that I've seen are larger and even heavier. So those for me would probably not even be a consideration for buying a tablet. Your opinion may vary. I'm already getting it in the neck on the comments from some of you guys about why not being a fan of Windows, but it's not really that. I'm just not a, really a big fan of the larger form factor size devices. The seven inch devices I find are much more portable and pocketable. I find myself carrying them around more, having it with me more often. 
I looked down again to the other small uh, category of the smaller devices, five inches and less. And with the exception of the Dell Street, which is quite large and also acts as a phone, I would say that I probably would disregard a lot of the smaller products just because my uh, mobile phone that I carry takes that role already, something I can put in my pocket and has a lot of Android goodness on it. But going back to the Goldilocks thing, I wanted to revisit that one more time. I have to say, when I put this in my hand and started using this, I found that this is my new favorite tablet. It's the Hero Tab M802, uh, and it is really one of the best balanced. If you find some of the weight and the, the four point uh, by three aspect ratio really uh, spreads the weight out over it nicely if you're holding it in your hand, it's not dragging down in your hand the way some of the longer tablets are. I think probably this really is, in my mind, at, at this time, the, the best choice for form factor. You can chime in the comments, comments with your arguments about